let's take a look at one of the most unusual and unstable designs in aviation history, the X-29. The Grumman X-29 was an experimental aircraft that intensely tested a combination of the use of canards, forward swept wings, fly-by-wire, composite materials, and other cutting-edge aircraft technologies. Featuring a highly aerodynamically unstable design which first flew in 1984, the last X-29 flight was conducted in 1992 and the program contributed greatly to aviation research. Today, we will look at the development of the X-29 along with some of the key challenges and milestones of the program during its operational testing. Here are some quick specifications for the X-29. Length 48 feet 1 inch Height 14 feet 9.5 inches Wingspan 27 feet 3 inches Maximum speed Mach 1.8 Empty weight 13,800 pounds Maximum takeoff weight 17,800 pounds Engines 1 General Electric F404 GE400 Afterburning Turbofan Engine Producing 16,000 pounds of thrust with afterburner. Forward swept wings have been of interest to aircraft designers for decades. There were several gliders prior to World War II that featured forward swept wings, and NACA, which was a predecessor to NASA, conducted some wind tunnel tests of forward swept wings at Langley in 1931. One of the first powered aircraft to feature a forward swept wing was the Bugatti R100 which was a 1937 designed air racer intended to compete with the Messerschmitt fighter team. However, due to the outbreak of World War II, the aircraft never flew. During the war in 1943, Germany is working on the Junkers Ju-287, a testbed bomber that hoped to make use of the inherent advantages of a forward swept wing. Developed by Dr. Hans Walk, the four-engine Ju-287 was test flown in 1944 with fixed landing gear, but ultimately was too late in the war to reach production status. As the jet age dawned, North American explored forward swept wing designs for its legendary P-51 Mustang. The forward swept wing or SFW derivative of the Mustang was to have tricycle gear and use both the Allison V-1710 G6R piston engine in the nose and the aft ventrally mounted Westinghouse 19X B28 jet engine. While very intriguing, this Mustang never made it past the concept phase. Following World War II, the HFB-320 Hansa jet was produced and flown in 1964. Designed by the same lead engineer who worked on the Ju-287, interestingly, the HFB-320 was and is the world's only forward-swept passenger aircraft. Some 47 examples were built, with the type being retired in 2004. However, both the Ju-87 and HFB-320 suffered from weight issues, typically in the wing. One major challenge with forward swept wings was the amount of stress induced by the wings. Strengthening the wing is possible, but using conventional materials incurs weight penalties. The full advantages of forward swept wings could not yet be realized. In the 1970s, composite materials were introduced. Composites were lighter and in some cases stronger than steel. As a result, entire new possibilities in aircraft construction became viable, effectively allowing for new designs to be explored which were not previously possible or practical using conventional materials. Consequently, in 1977, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA, and the U.S. Air Force issued proposals for a research aircraft designed to explore the forward swept wing concept. Along with forward swept wings, the aircraft was also to validate studies which had predicted better control and lift qualities in extreme maneuvers and possibly reduce aerodynamic drag, as well as fly more efficiently at cruise speeds. In response, three companies submitted proposals. General Dynamics took their S-16 and made a forward swept wing version of it and dubbed it the SFW-16. This F-16 version never advanced beyond the concept phase, but was part of a family of experimental wing designs to the F-16 airframe, which also included the F-16XL. Some speculate that the SFW-16 entry was not chosen since there were many F-16 research projects active and proposed at the time and the consensus was that the F-16 was overrepresented. Rockwell had also submitted a design, and had actually been working on several prototypes which led to their SFW submission. Rockwell had just finished work on their highly maneuverable aircraft technology or HIMAT demonstrator. The HIMAT was a remotely piloted fly-by-wire aircraft which made use of canards and a forward-swept wing. 
The Rockwell entry was known as the Sabre Bat, and Rockwell went as far as producing a full-scale model, which was showcased at the Paris Air Show, along with running several ads in publications at the time. And finally, Grumman submitted their proposal. Grumman's entry was the 712 or G712, which would ultimately prove to be the winning design and receive the designation X-29. Interestingly, the X-29 was made up of components from existing aircraft. The forward fuselage along with the nose gear were from an F-5A Freedom Fighter, while the control surface actuators and main landing gear were from the F-16. The General Electric F-404 series engine was similar to the one used on the F-18 Hornet as well as the F-20 Tiger Shark. The F-20 had used the F-404-100 engine, while the X-29 used the F-404-400 engine. One of the biggest challenges with forward swept wings are the extreme stresses that the wings have to endure. As lift is generated, twisting forces are applied to the wing's leading edge, which produces a higher angle of attack and then in turn produces more lift along with even more twisting force. In a phenomenon known as aeroelastic divergence, this self-amplifying feedback loop can rapidly lead to structural failure. If conventional metals are used to produce a forward swept wing, an extremely stiff wing would be needed to resist the twisting effect. However, this would cause the wings to be prohibitively heavy, negating any design advantages. To mitigate this, the X-29 made extensive use of composites such as carbon fiber. The X-29's wings used a laminate design which produced coupling between the bending and torsion forces. In this way, as lift increases, the wing tips would bend upward while the torsion loads attempt to twist the wing upwards, but the coupling resists by twisting the wing downward, which stops the divergence process from occurring. Along with the composite wings, the X-29 implemented what is known as a three-surface configuration. This meant that the X-29 used canards, forward swept wings, and aft straight control surfaces to maintain control. The canards and wings worked together to reduce wave and trim drag, while the aft strakes provided control in situations where the center of gravity was off and assisted the canards. Along with the three surface configuration, the X-29 also placed its center of gravity well aft of the traditional aerodynamic center. This combination made the X-29 highly unstable, and it was thought that this high instability would lead to a super maneuverable aircraft. To assist the pilot in controlling the X-29, sophisticated flight computers were implemented and had to provide some 40 corrections per second. This flight control system was composed of triply redundant digital computers, which were themselves backed up by three more analog computers. And while any of the three computers could fly the aircraft on its own, the redundancy allowed for error checking. Essentially, each computer would vote on the best inputs to maintain flight control, and this was compared against the other two to check for errors. This was critical since the X-29 was so unstable that it could break apart before the pilot had time to even eject. Inherent instability is used in many fighters today such as the F-16 and F-18, but the X-29 took it to the extreme. For comparison, the F-18 has an instability factor of only 5%, while the X-29 was 35% unstable. The first X-29 flight took place on 14 December 1984 out of Edwards Air Force Base, with Chuck Sewell at the controls. Upon taking to the skies, the X-29 became the third forward-swept jet-powered aircraft to fly, the previous two being the aforementioned German Junkers Ju-287 in 1944 and the HFB-320 Hansa jet in 1964. Interestingly, these three aircraft each flew 20 years apart, 1944, 1964, and 1984. The X-29 proved to be so reliable that four months after its first flight, it became a NASA test program. Almost exactly a year later, in December of 1985, the X-29 became the first forward-swept aircraft to break the sound barrier in level flight. Ultimately, two X-29s were produced. Aircraft number one had tail number 003, while aircraft number two had tail number 049. Aircraft one was flown in flight regimes that avoided maneuvers which could result in departure from controlled flight. To fully explore the flight envelope of the X-29, Aircraft 2 had a spin recovery parachute installed and as a result participated in high angle of attack testing. This allowed the X-29 to maintain maneuverability up to angles of attack or alpha of 25 degrees, while a maximum alpha of 67 degrees was recorded in a momentary pitch up maneuver. In the end, the two X-29s flew a total of 242 times between 1984 and 1992. In these flights, the X-29 was able to demonstrate some new technologies and applications, as well as new uses of existing technologies. Some examples include aircraft control and handling during extreme instability, 
the use of a double hinge trailing edge flapper on at subsonic speeds, vortex control, demonstration of military utility, and aero elastic tailoring to control structural divergence. The X-29 is easily one of the most iconic and recognizable of the X-planes. Ultimately, the X-29 accomplished its mission. To demonstrate that a highly unstable aircraft could be flown safely with high G-loads and deliver excellent maneuverability. So why did the type not enter into production in some capacity? Despite the use of composites and a laminate design, there still was high structural stress applied to the wings. A combat version of the X-29 would undoubtedly be exposed to significant stress loads, and that's before considering battle damage being applied to the wings or fuselage. Still, it's fun to imagine a combat production version of the X-29 and what that would have looked like. Here is a 3D rendered concept of an F-29 Retaliator. Let me know what you think in the comments below. The investigation of military applications for forward swept wings did not end with the X-29. About five years after the last X-29 flight in 1997, the Russian Air Force Sukhoi Su-47 took to the skies. While showing some promising results, the Su-47 did not enter into production and only one flying example was built. More recently in Russia, the KB-SAT SR-10 trainer was developed as a prototype, featuring forward swept wings, the extensive use of composites, and the front half of what looks like a Super Hornet. The SR-10 first flew in 2015 but ultimately was not adopted by the Russian Air Force. The X-29 remains one of the most unique looking aircraft to take to the skies and contributed immensely to the art and science that is aerodynamics and the study of composite materials. Today, one of the X-29s can be seen at the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson in Dayton, Ohio, while the other X-29 is located at Edwards Air Force Base. What do you think? Was the X-29 one of the best X-planes? Would you have liked to have seen it gone into production? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click the subscribe button and then click the real subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. I'd also like to take a moment to thank my Patreons who directly support this channel. If you'd like to become a Patreon, I'll leave a link in the description below. Stay safe and see you next time.